I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord has bestowed on us and the great goodness that the Lord has granted toward us which he has bestowed on us according to his mercies according to his compassion according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses and the abundance of his steadfast love for he has said surely you are my children I know you will answer incline thy ear to me hear my words bend down and listen as I pray wondrously show thy wonderful ways and steadfast unfailing love by your mighty power you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering I have trusted you Lord and never doubted Lord try me and test me look closely into my heart and mind I see your love and I live by your truth show me your ways O Lord teach me your paths lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation on you I wait all the day you will remember O Lord your tender mercies and your loving kindness your steadfast love O Lord is as great as and extends to all the heavens your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds your justice decisions and your righteousness are like the mighty mountains you are concerned for men and animals alike how precious is your constant steadfast love O oh God my God I want to do what you want your teachings are in my heart I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation it is with lasting love that I'm tenderly caring for you says your God you gave your children bread from heaven for their hunger you sent water from the rock for their thirst you told them to enter and take the land which you promised to give them but they our ancestors were arrogant bullheaded they and our fathers acted proudly they wouldn't obey your commands they turned a deaf ear they refused to remember the miracles you had done for them they refused to obey and they were not mindful of your wonders that you did among them they turned stubborn got it into their heads to return to their Egyptian slavery you stayed a forgiving God gracious and compassionate a God of forgiveness always ready to pardon gracious and merciful slow to become angry and full of love and mercy incredibly patient with tons of love you didn't dump them you didn't abandon them you also multiplied their children as the stars of heaven and brought them into the land which you had told their fathers to go in and possess so the people went in and possessed the land you subdued before them the inhabitants of the land the Canaanites and gave them into their hands with their kings and the people of the land that they might do with them as they wished his loving kindness endureth forever his loving kindness is everlasting God's love never fails and his love is eternal though we were spiritually dead because of the things we did against God he gave us new life with Christ by grace ye are saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that he might display in the coming ages the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God don't grieve God don't break his heart his Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life making you fit for himself don't take such a gift for granted stop being mean bad-tempered and angry 
quarreling, harsh words, and dislike for others should have no place in your lives. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you, because you belong to Christ. I will betroth you to me forever. I will make you my promised bride forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness, in faithfulness, and in justice, in loving kindness, in compassion, and in faithfulness. I will be true to you as my promised bride. Then you will know the love of the Lord. Do not fear. The Lord your God is in your midst. The Mighty One will save you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. You will rest in his love. In your steadfast love spare my life. Revive me according to your loving kindness and your steadfast love. Thus says the Lord, Do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this, that they understand and know me, that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. Boast on this. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. And you, being dead in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses, having wiped out, blotting out the handwriting of requirements that was against you, which was contrary to you. He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to his cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, put them to open shame, triumphing over them in it. Let me see your kindness toward me in the morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for my prayer is sincere. Help me to do your will. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Lead me in good paths, in the land of uprightness, for your spirit is good. For the sake of your name, O Lord, revive me. Bring me out of all this trouble, because you are true to your promises. For I am your servant, your very own child. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that demon spirits, your enemies, are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I will rejoice. I sing for joy. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and at last I shall be fully satisfied as my mouth praises you with joyful lips. I will praise you with great joy when I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me, for you have been my help. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your mercy remember me, for your goodness sake, O Lord. 
Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But according to his own mercy and his steadfast love, when the goodness and loving kindness of our God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly and richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All this because of his loving kindness and mercy. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, and may be able to comprehend with all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses learned knowledge. I, Paul, am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. I was treated mercifully because I didn't know what I was doing, didn't know who I was doing it against. Grace mixed with faith and love poured over me and into me, and all because of Jesus. Hold tightly to the pattern of truth I taught you, especially the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus and concerning the faith and love Christ Jesus offers you. Lord, you are a God who shows mercy and is kind. You don't become angry quickly. You have great love and faithfulness and are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Show me a sign for good that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. In those days, the multitude being very great, there was again a great crowd without anything to eat. Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come from afar. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all the people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing 
The Lord is just in all his ways, and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who trust and believe him. He will also hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. You will do everything you have promised. Lord, your love is eternal. Complete the work that you have begun. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives toward us generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst. Our Father is kind. You be kind. Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Give away your life. You'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. For the measure you give, will be the measure you get back. When the time came for the kindness and love of God our Savior to appear, then He saved us. Not because we were good enough to be saved, but because of His kindness and according to His mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, by washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us with wonderful fullness, and all because of what Jesus Christ our Savior did, so that he could declare us good in God's eyes, all because of his great kindness. And now we can share in the wealth of the eternal life he gives us, and by being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Therefore be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with Him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of Himself to us. Love like that. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church, a love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. 
Everything he does and says is designed to bring out the best of her. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word, so as to present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind, yes, so that she may be holy and without blemish. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For you we are in danger of death all the time. People think we are worth no more than sheep to be killed. But despite all this, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loved us enough to die for us. For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't, and life can't. The angels won't, and all the powers of hell itself cannot keep God's love away. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, or where we are, high above the sky, or in the deepest ocean, nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ when he died for us. Nothing else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Have compassion and mercy on some who are wavering. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. And have mercy on those whose faith is wavering. This is how we've come to understand and experience love. Christ sacrificed his life for us. This is why we ought to live sacrificially for our fellow believers and not just be out for ourselves. If you see some brother or sister in need, and have the means to do something about it, but turn a cold shoulder and do nothing. What happens to God's love? It disappears, and you made it disappear. My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. Little children, let us stop just saying we love people. Let us really love them, and show it by our actions. Then we will know for sure by our actions, that we are on God's side, and our consciences will be clear, even when we stand before the Lord. God is love. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Little children, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. A certain lawyer answered Jesus, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we were his enemies, we were brought back to God by the death of his Son. God proves his love for us, in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, are we saved through him from the wrath of God? 
For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. Now we rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done in dying for our sins, making us friends of God. How good it is to give thanks to you, O Lord, to sing and proclaim your constant, unfailing love in the morning and your faithfulness in the evening. In your honor, O Most High God, with the music of stringed instruments and with melody on the harp, your mighty deeds, O Lord, make me glad because of what you have done. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. O Lord, how great are your works! The Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. You declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night in all you do. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. Then everyone will know the mighty things you do and the glory and majesty of your kingdom. Your kingdom will go on and on, and you will rule forever. The Lord will keep all his promises. He is loyal to all he has made. The Lord helps those who have been defeated and takes care of those who are in trouble. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. But now in this time we are always thankful to the Father who has made us fit to share all the wonderful things that belong to those who live in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us out of the darkness and gloom of Satan's kingdom and brought us into the kingdom of his dear Son, who bought our freedom with his blood and forgave us all our sins. Therefore know that the Lord your God he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations to those who love him and keep his word. But the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord your God loves you. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God and that we might live through Him. We have come to know and believe in the love that God has for us. God is love, and the person who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. This is how love has been perfected among us. We will have confidence on the day of judgment because while we are in this world, we are just like him. There is no fear where love exists. Rather, perfect love banishes fear. For fear involves punishment, and the person who lives in fear has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Grace be to you, and peace, from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion 
forever and ever. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father encourage you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. God loved us, and through his grace he gave us a good hope and encouragement and eternal consolation that continues forever to comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. Jesus said, A man had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. There he wasted his possessions on wild living. After he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the husks the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. With his heart pounding and filled with love, compassion, and loving pity, he ran out, embraced him, and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and get our fat calf and kill it so we can have a feast and celebrate. My son was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he's found. So they began to celebrate. This is a picture of God's endless love towards you. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. I've loved you the way my Father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done, kept my Father's commands and made myself at home in His love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy, and your joy wholly mature. Yes, your cup of joy will overflow. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. Jesus answered, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them and we will come to them 
and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from my Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Helper, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have rendered it harmless, deprived it of power to harm you. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here I am and the children whom God has given me. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice for the remission of sins, for the sins of the people. Because he, indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. He is able to help those who are being tested, and it was necessary for Jesus to be like us, his brothers, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God, a priest who would be both merciful to us and faithful to God in dealing with the sins of the people. For since he himself has now been through suffering and temptation, he knows what it's like when we suffer and are tempted, and he is wonderfully willing and able to help us. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he never said a word. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he stood silent before the ones condemning him. From prison and trial they led him away to his death. But who among the people of that day realized it was their sins that he was dying for, that he was suffering their punishment? He was buried like a criminal, but in a rich man's grave. But he had done no wrong, and had never spoken an evil word. But it was the Lord's good plan to bruise him and fill him with grief. However, when his soul has been made an offering for sin, then he shall have a multitude of children, many heirs. He shall live again, and God's program shall prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by the anguish of his soul, he shall be satisfied. And because of what he has experienced, my righteous servant shall make many to be counted righteous before God. 
for he shall bear all their sins. Therefore I will give him the honors of one who is mighty and great, because he has poured out his soul unto death. He was counted as a sinner, and he bore the sins of many, and he pled with God for sinners. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. This is his loving kindness toward us all. Jesus spoke to them, I have told you these things, using stories that hide the meaning. But the time will come when I will not use stories like that to tell you things. I will speak to you in plain words about the Father. In that day you will ask the Father for things in my name. I mean, I will not need to ask the Father for you. The Father himself loves you. He loves you because you loved me and believed that I came from God. I came from the Father into the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then the followers of Jesus said, You are speaking clearly to us now and are not using stories that are hard to understand. We can now see that you know all things. You can answer a person's question even before it is asked. This makes us believe you came from God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. The faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord, for the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed. My love won't walk away from you. My covenant commitment of peace won't fall apart, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the way to take away our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. This is what real love is. It is not our love for God. It is God's love for us in sending his Son to be the way to take away our sins. God is love. Love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. Love never fails. Love never ends. 
This is the mercy and loving kindness of a Lord toward us. If God is for us, who can be against us? In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord.